And now we get to color it. So with this one, I colored it so that we have this contrast color effect. We have the warm colors of the octopus against the cool colors of the water in its eyes. Uh, so that contrast effect is quite exciting. I'm wondering if I want to make this octopus more pink and red this time and then the water looks a little more green and that would be a nice contrast too. So uh, let's just see how that turns out and then uh, if you see what I'm doing and you want to do it or you want to come with your own colors, uh, by all means go ahead. Use your own colors. Here we go. I'm going to use my pink in here. I'm thinking all of these probably need to be pink. That's a lot of pink. It's a lot of little, little details of pink too. And even though I'm getting out of the lines, it's okay because I'm going to be using red. Pink is actually light red and red will go right over it. You don't want to watch me color all of it. You want to fast forward to another part so you can see uh, what it looks like. You're more than welcome to do that, of course. And when I do use the red, I'm going to use different pressure on the red to get it to be a dark value and a light value. Um, I think that will give it a nice effect. So when we look at this one, I used regular orange and then I used a red orange uh, around it to give it a uh, value scale to some ex extent. Even though red orange is tertiary color and orange is a secondary color, it creates this blending like zone of highlight to shadow. Okay, I think I got them all. And we'll do all the little bumps, all the little suction cup things. It's hearts now. What should I make those? I think I'm going to use a red violet. Maybe I'll put pink on the inside and blend it with red violet. Let's do that. Pink. Violet. That's pretty. I think I'm missing pink there. Okay. Oh my, I must have missed multiple ones there. Or just my eyes weren't seeing it. Okay, so that was red violet. I do think I have, no, this is regular red. I don't know why I'm thinking there's another color. It's not totally red-violet. Um, like, 
violet red or something. It's just lighter than this. This is violet, red violet. Um, but I must not. Alright, so as again, uh, this is going to be pressed down on so that it's really dark right where it overlaps because this is blocking the ability for light to get there so it's going to be darker. And then as I go out, it's I'm going to put less pressure and it will be lighter. And then uh, I'm going to make this rather dark here because this part here is overlapping and so it's going to create that shadow effect again. And then as I go up, less pressure. I'm thinking I might want to blend some pink into it just to solidify it where it's lighter. And if I go over where I already used the pink, it's fine. It'll be fine. So things that are overlapping, that means that this would be darker because it's behind that and it's called causing a shadow or it's blocking light. Um, it, it can be quite tricky deciding on where it's supposed to be darker and lighter. Um, if you, the artist, just define where the light's coming from, like if I, I always tend to have the light come from the left for some reason. Um, I don't know what that, what the reason behind that is, but I think many uh, works of art are that way. Um, it's just, I've never looked it up why. Um, it's just what I do. I don't know if I learned it somewhere and that's what I do. But I'm teaching it to you now. So uh, if you keep that going, it will look more realistic or round uh, and not so flat. The concept of highlight and shadow uh, really does play into making things look more round on a two-dimensional drawing surface or more um, realistic. Okay. Light again. Oh, it looks so happy. So happy. Happy octopus. Trying to get between his hearts. Now, as I'm coloring, I kind of get lost in my thoughts. Um, I know there's a whole, I don't know what the movement is still about, but the whole concept of coloring and relaxation. Uh, this, at this point in time, you could probably play your own kind of music while you color. Um, I would suggest music that relaxes you. I think that drawing and coloring and and whatever way in which you apply color to your drawing, there is this inner relaxation mode that I believe artists get into. And 
those who enjoy the process of art making. It, it, there is this inner motivation to do it because it de-stresses. And that's how I, I currently was feeling for a moment when I got lost in my thoughts. And I realized, oh, I'm filming a video. I, I need to come back to, <laughs> come back to reality. Uh, so keep that in mind as, as you continue to draw and work out your own ideas. And as you apply color and you, you know what you're doing, it becomes more and more a relaxing state than a, a learning state or a concerned if you drew it just right. There, there is this mode of just enjoyment of the process. And so I'm going to put some more pressure to darken that up. And I mentioned about using the pink to lighten some areas. So I'm going to do that with pink and I'm just going to apply it to those areas that are meant to be light. And that's going to um, smooth out the crayon so it's not all fuzzy. Uh, and I, I know there's a term for it. I want to say it's burnishing. I think burnishing means we have to take another scraper tool over it and then that smooths it out. You could say it's blending it. So there's probably I don't know how many different kinds of terminology on how to use different materials. And I have an inkling of it all. How did you get that ink inkling? of many of it. Uh, I just know how to apply it and sharing it with you with uh, limited words there. But I think that as you're looking at what I'm doing, you, you get the concept here. Taking a light color over a dark color will smooth it out and make it look exciting. Uh, white in particular over top of color is nice. Kinda. Gives it a shimmer. Not doing it everywhere. I just want to put it in some of the areas to break it up, give it a different feel. Very fun indeed. I'm excited about my choice of color here. Now you could uh, use cool color on the octopus and then leave this white and that could be kind of fun. You use a cool colors and then put in just directional lines of the water or bubbles to define where the octopus is floating. Okay, so it's all colored in. Now I am going to add, um, I said green, right? Well, that would be interesting. Uh, the yellow, green, tertiary color. I think I'm going to go with it. We have the regular green and then we have our blue green. Uh, and if I combine these, it will make that contrasting effect as I mentioned again earlier. So I'm going to start with the lighter one and I'm actually going to color all of the space around it with the lighter one. I know, you're like, green water is not appealing, but it is our work of art, and if it turns out not to look so great, I will be fine with that, because I know now, in the future, when I do this, or I do another drawing, and I choose my colors not to do this. I have a really strong feeling it's going to look fabulous, though, because red and green are complement colors, and complement colors mean they're supposed to help each other. Yeah, look a little more exciting, bolder, brighter. So they should, just like when you get a compliment, it makes you beam, makes you feel better. Somebody says about something great you've done or how you look. So red is giving green a compliment. 
says, hey green, you're pretty fabulous there. You're the color of growth and wealth. And green is like, hey red, you're pretty powerful. You're the color of some extreme emotions. Nice, powerful color, red. Those compliments are very important, especially in in our human lives. They really do help build us up. So if you ever have a thought about giving a person a compliment, please do it and help build them up. And in return, somebody will probably compliment you or that person will realize to say something wonderful about you. Now I'm gonna take the regular green, typical green, and I'm just gonna place it in some of the areas. Not all over. I am coloring in a vertical direction. It makes sense because of how the position of the octopus is going. If I colored the, the horizontal direction, I think there would be more of a visual pool or a, a visual tug of war and it would make the picture look um, like it's fighting. And I don't want that. I want the picture to look calm. I want it to look unified and uh, give the impression of um, just getting along, that everything is playing out beautifully instead of having that battle of direction. And I don't want that horizontal motion to take away from the central theme. All right, so now I have the blue-green. I'm going to put the blue-green in here, and I think I'm going to put a little more of it uh, near the octopus. And then the lighter green will be um, like in the center. And I just may add a little bit of blue since Many of us have the train of thought that the water is blue and while well, water is actually clear, uh, at least that's my understanding, uh, it reflects the environment. Water reflects the colors around it. So if it's the ocean and there's nothing else around but the sky, uh, it would reflect the sky. Or it could uh, be so deep that it picks up on the darkness um, deep in the ocean too. So then it might look murky, uh, maybe a super dark blue and so on. And in the end, I hope that you see that my choices actually played out well. And uh, color wheels. If you have a color wheel that you can refer to, pull one up on the computer or a device, and you'll see that um, blue and orange are across from each other on a color wheel, so they complement each other. They're also contrasting, light against dark. Uh, the same goes with red and green. They complement each other, and uh, they are contrasting. Uh, green is lighter for the most part, and red is, is darker. However, value of a color, you can get the range of dark to light with just one color. I really wonder about yellow. <laughs> you can make yellow dark, uh, but yeah, I guess I, yeah, you can make yellow dark. Just yellow seems so light to me all the time. Um, all right, so we now have our little edging here, and that is where I'm going to bring in this blue. And uh, unlike this one, which is light, I think I'm going to make these dark. And if I can find myself a white, I guess, will do that. Let's see what happens. Now if I press down, it will give it that smooth, that smoothness. And I had to use my fingernail because the crayon uh, shavings were were in there. Now it's just, I don't know though, it's like, that looks pretty nice the way it is. Do I need to keep going with the white? I don't think so. I'm going to put the white down. I like how that looks. Is this blue? It is blue. Ah. It's amazing how that 
looks. I know I have a crayon that says Indigo. Um, I don't recall having a crayon called Indigo when I was a child. And sometimes I pull that out by accident. And before you know it, it's finished. How adorable and fun is that loving octopus. And it just, it's just so beautiful. Oh, those colors are amazing. See, you can see how this one just comes across a little deeper and darker um, with the pink on top of the red, the red's darker, it's lighter. And the, that green really makes that red pop. Uh, and then well, orange here, I colored very lightly in the background compared to this deeper green. And you can see how the orange seems to pop. So the colors are complementing each other. And our octopus is very busy with all its wiggly tentacles sharing that love and says, hey, give me a hug. Well, I've enjoyed working through our loving octopus picture. This is A.M. Snyder from Snyder Sunshine Art Studio again. And I, I hope that you will join me for additional uh, videos on drawing and coloring. Until next time, bye.